Welcome in to EP Wealth Investors, Informed Investor Market Update. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial with Adam Phillips. He's a CFA, CFP, Director of Portfolio Strategy for EP Wealth. The calendar says it's the end of June, which basically means the end of the second quarter. 2022, the first two quarters have not been kind, but last week was a big relief rally, or was it a dead cat balance, or was it the part of bottoming that we don't quite understand scientifically yet? So let's take a look at the year-to-date numbers because we're about halfway done. The S&P 500 is down 17% for the year. The NASDAQ is down roughly 25% for the year. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down 17.9%. The underlying theme of what's struggling is, is what's causing inflation. Oil prices are up 43% for the year at $108 a barrel. Inflation and recession, we've got lots to talk about. But let's talk about that second quarter and what we just went through. Adam, thoughts? Yeah, well, look, I, I think that we're all investors are limping into the close here, the close of the quarter, but we were all happy to see some green on our screens last week. You mentioned it was a it was a strong week. Uh, S&P 500 gained almost 7%. Uh, so I, I think you know, the way that we're looking at this is I, I think uh, there's going to be this debate about, I, I know you hate the phrase dead cat bounce, uh, let's say bull market rally or this head fake. Is it something um, that is more temporary in this in this that uh, this bear market is still kind of intact, we're going to have to deal with it? Or um, does this thing have legs? Is, are we going to see some kind of a, uh, a sustained rebound here? I think the jury's still out. I think from our standpoint, though, we don't think that we're out of the woods just yet. Uh, yeah, I think when, we're, when we see these things, I, I think the first thing we want to take note of is that bear market rallies are, are quite common, right? We're going to see some and this is probably one of them, um, because the reality is that we're still waiting for a lot of answers to, to our questions, and we're just not going to get them for, for some time. I think one of the other things that I'm watching are expectations for uh, future earnings uh, for these S&P 500 companies. Um, you know, we may have talked about it in recent weeks, but that's really the one shoe that's left to drop. It's kind of surprising seeing some of the weakness in the data uh, from an economic standpoint, and seeing that the expectations for future earnings are still pretty much intact. We're still looking at uh, analyst estimate, uh, estimates of about 10% earnings growth in 2023. So you wonder, is that really a realistic number uh, if uh, we are talking more and more about a recessionary scenario? So I think that's one thing that we're going to be watching here. Maybe that's uh, something that needs to be adjusted. We need to see those, those expectations come a little bit back down towards reality. Um, and so maybe that tells you we're not quite out of the woods yet. I don't think that stocks are going to fall off a cliff here, but I also don't want to look at this and say, okay, let's get in there and rush into buy because uh, it, it, it's all clear now we're, we're good to go. Uh, I don't think we're there just yet. I think it's fair for me to interject and say it's more of an art sometimes than a science. You're looking for uh, earnings expectations to drop. I'm looking for maybe job cuts. We're all feeling some sort of vibe. And it's, it's a work in process is what I've always seen historically after doing this for 25 years. Is that kind of what you're seeing as well as a work in progress and not necessarily a, a detailed step-by-step? -step well, that, that, that's right. I mean, I, I wish it was uh, it were so easy that they, they rang a bell at the bottom and they rang a bell at the top to let you know when to get out. And, and it's just not like that. I mean, there's so much data that we need to go through. And a lot of it is still conflicting, right? And, and I kind of just gave you one example about how earnings uh, expectations are still strong. A lot of the data is turning in the wrong direction. And so um, it, it's really, you know, I, I think in reality, a lot of us have our own little scorecard that we're watching um, and we kind of check off the box as we start to see some of these things go. But, um, but it really is a work in progress and you need to just really take everything um, and, and look at it from a broader perspective. And that's really what we're doing here. So talking about broader perspectives, last week, I think the market um, messaging shifted a little bit from, yes, we have inflation. We're going to be seeing CPI numbers for a while that are bad, consumer price index. Uh, but the conversation went, how does the Fed get out of this without causing a recession? And I think last week was the first week where we really started talking recession, the R word that goes with the I word. And interestingly, the market had a positive reaction to the R word being introduced. It's almost as if it's... Thank you for noticing. Um, thoughts on the inflation turning to recession angle? Yeah, well, well, first, I mean, you, you know, you talk about the market reaction last week. I, I think a lot of it was probably due to the fact that on a short term basis, the market was probably oversold. Okay. And so a lot of people kind of came in to buy the dip. It's something that we haven't quite seen uh, over the course of the year so far, but we finally saw it. Um, you know, I, I, as I said, not sure if this will be sustained or not, but also something that, that happened last week and um, one of the big 
themes last week was talk of recession. And we know that uh, uh, Fed Chairman Jay Powell had his uh, Humphrey Hawkins testimony uh, before Congress last week. And he was talking, um, I think for the first time, he was really alluding to the fact that recession due to um, aggressive monetary tightening is, is really um, a, a potential concern, right? And he's, you know, and he kind of just said, look, getting prices under control, getting inflation under control is the number one priority. If we happen to tip ourselves into a recession along the way, then, you know, that's, that's the cost of doing business. And, that, and that's really the, the signal that he gave to, um, to Congress and, and, and to investors. You know, I, I think it was interesting that um, I, the, the word that he used in referring to their commitment to get inflation back to their 2% target was, was unconditional, meaning that is what they're pri prioritizing here. They're going to keep raising rates. We saw their last hike was 75 basis points. Next one is scheduled for July. We'll see if they go 50 basis points, 75 basis points. We don't know, um, but it will be uh, just another cut in a, in a long series. Um, uh, excuse me, another hike in a long series of rate hikes to try to get this inflation under control as they get more and more aggressive and, and really firm up their stance towards monetary tightening, that just increases the, uh, the risk of recession. I think a lot of those who are maybe a little bit uh, uh, more positive that they could achieve a soft landing are probably you know, switching their tune a little bit and saying, okay, um, they, they, you know, the, the Fed is unlikely to, uh, to um, get a soft landing here and to um, you know, avoid a recession. Um, they, it's, it's just hard, the decks are stacked against, uh, stacked against them. We're obviously, hoping for the best, but we're expecting the worst, right? We're all on the same team here. We want them to achieve a soft landing, but let's just be realistic here. They have to get inflation down from 8.6%. If you're looking at CPI back down to something that's a little bit more healthy, which is around 2%. Uh, and so, as we've said before, it's really only blunt instruments at their disposal. And how do they use those? It's interesting that you talked about Jerome Powell talking to Congress last week. One of the things that he had to do was say, I can't control oil. It's not my job. I have no influence over oil. He changes the interest rates on monetary policy, affects credit cards and credit utilization. But he said basically oil is the boogeyman right now that we can't do much about. And that ties into Biden as well. He's trying to do something about inflation and gasoline prices. Um, maybe we could talk quickly about the obvious elephant in the room, oil prices being over $100 a barrel until those come down. Um, again, it's, it's that may be our next sign that we want to see along the road of collecting signposts at the ending of the, the down market. Yeah, look, I, I think we talked about this a little bit last week was this uh, gas tax holiday. And so that was officially announced, I, I think, after uh, we spoke last week. And so the question is, will this pass? I don't think it will. I don't think many expect that it will. Okay. I, I think let's let's take this for what it is. Um, this is kind of an acknowledgement that the White House is out of options here. They, they can't really control it. The, the gas tax is not really, it doesn't really move the whole needle. I think it's really interesting um, to look back at, at um, what, uh, what former President Obama used to refer to the gas tax holiday um, cuts as a gimmick, right? And it's just telling you that, um, you know, they, they don't really have too many options here. Um, they, unless they really um, increase supply um, or we, we suddenly see the situation in Ukraine get resolved overnight, which I don't think is going to happen, uh, gas prices, you know, could soften a little bit, but they're likely to remain elevated. And so uh, I, I think that's just the unfortunate reality here is that um, the White House is likely doing this um, to provide some kind of support um, for them and, and for really Democrats as we head into the midterm election season. Um, but uh, we'll see if it really gets the job done. I don't think many uh, expect that it, uh, um, that it will pass, though. I think we've hit everything that we need to hit. So I'm going to throw a little aside in myself while you prep a thought to end the segment with. Um, one of the ones I want to throw down is the, the demon known versus the unknown, Adam, is that we are now expecting, you know, another 75 basis points. We're now expecting inflation or now we're expecting a potential recession. Wall Street's pretty good at handling this kind of stuff when we know it's coming. That's historically what I've seen. Now, again, it doesn't always play out like that. Um, but it seems like the issues are coming clear into focus and that should help uh, get us to where we need to get to in the uh, yeah. near term future as far as um, getting it's, it's, through this process. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's true. I mean, as, as a final thought, I'll, I'll just kind of continue that, um, you know, but we, we always say Wall Street doesn't like uncertainty. Well, Wall Street really just doesn't like surprises, right? right? We, we've seen two, I, I would say, exogenous events 
this year so far, and that's really contributed to the uh, the, the lower uh, risk sentiment that's out there uh, among Wall Street. Um, you know, one of them is obviously the situation in Ukraine, the, the Russia's invasion there, and what that's done to uh, commodity prices, uh, various commodities. And the other one uh, is uh, is China's lockdown, their uh, their um, zero COVID um, you know re restrictions, and, and which has forced lockdowns. It's really just exacerbated these ongoing supply chain concerns. And so I think if it weren't for these, maybe we would have been making a little bit more progress towards inflation, right? And uh, you just don't know that, but it's like, you know, okay, we've been surprised. We've been hit with these two unforeseen events already so far this year. I think that, you know, our, our, um, our uh, alert is up or, you know, our, our, our guard is up right now. We're kind of on the lookout for all these things, but I, um, you know, you need to kind of expect the unexpected. You just don't know what, the, what the, those situations will be. But I really think that, uh, and I am hopeful that the next several months will bring more answers than questions. Uh, and, and I think that's really going to help investors out. It's going to be an interesting time. We've got July 4th coming up, a big holiday travel weekend. We've got Amazon Prime, which will be a big retail test to see how they're doing. I'm sure you and I will be talking about these events and much, much more in the future. I'm Rob Black for EP Wealth's Advisors, Informed Investor Market Update. He's Adam Phillips, CFA, CFP. He is Director of Portfolio Strategy with EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black. Thank you.